Hmm. Emergency changes and normal changes. What is emergency change? Something like a server is down and you go and check it. So what is the happen to server? So suddenly uh, the RAM is having certain problem. You have to change the RAM. In the process of troubleshooting, you may require to change to continue the service. That is emergency changes. Even you do emergency changes compulsory, you have to follow the SOP. Anything, any troubleshooting, routine maintenance, you have to follow the SOP, standard operating procedures. Follow the troubleshooting model, first identify what is an issue and what is the causing of this issue. Okay, test your theory. Okay, and implement uh, uh, and verify whether it is working or not. So it is works and do some preventive measures. The preventive measures means it is comes under problem management. Okay, we need a change. So you, when you are doing changes, you have to document what is the issue, why you require that change, and uh, uh, what are the changes you made it, uh, what is the result of it. And you have to notify to the CAB change advisory board. You have to inform to the CAB change advisory board, uh, document properly what is changes happen in CMDB also. Change sorry, CMDB um, configuration management database. So it's like our ITL database, it is. So, what are the Issues occur. So, what are the changes happen? What are the component you use it for that one? Maybe it can be a code change. It can be a, a component change. It can be a server change, or maybe operating system change. Anything. Even you do update upgradations comes under changes only. Again, normal changes, guys. Normal changes is like that. It is. So, I want to upgrade my server. So, I my server initially. I have a hundred users. Current server is working good, but maybe next uh, my number of users are increases. So I have to improve my server capacity. Have to improve my server capacity. So otherwise, what happen? The traffic is high in the on the server, so server cannot able to perform as uh, the as earlier. It's a more load on a server, better to implement, uh, improve the server performance to you have to maybe you have to increase RAM capacity, maybe you have to increase the processor capacity, maybe network capacity have to increase, and maybe have to more add more servers and do the load balancing in between. That is change management. Okay, but if you do any normal changes, means it's a pre-planning changes. Compulsory, you have to test. So before you applying any changes, why we should do any changes? Why we should do update? Why should we do upgradations? Why should we change some infrastructure? Why should we add something to it? Okay, why should we replace? And dependency changes. Okay, dependency changes. One change may require to other change. Dependency changes also. Okay. For example, I have a laptop, I have Windows 10, I want to upgrade to Windows 11. Or I have a server, Windows 2016 server, I want to upgrade it to 2019 server. It is, there is a dependency change. Dependency change is there. Service request, uh, yeah. Dependency changes, so it's a change uh, may, 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 uh, uh, like this. So even you are upgrading, updating, or maybe you are replacing. So it is a dependency changes are there. And test your changes before you are applying changes. Test your changes and uh, take a permission and a discussion with the CAB uh, Change Advisory Board. Okay, and notify what are the changes that has happened. Any downtime, any plan, planned downtime is there. Notify the clients 
about the planned downtime from this time to this time. This change is happening. OK, so that is the uh, thing. So another one is service request. What is a service request and incident and service request or service request follow? Service ticket. Sometimes people ask what is the difference between incident and service request, guys? Service request is request from user or a customer for asking a, a service or a information or updations or upgradations. OK, or uh, some installations uh, kind of stuff. Access permissions. This all comes under service request. OK, what is the difference between incident and service request? I request my organization to my service desk person. I request I want to access a printer. So given printer access, now I'm able to access the printer. One day I'm unable to access the printer. I have access, but I cannot be able to take a printout. Then I, I, I Sorry, your voice is not coming. Right, that is my voice is low. Breaking, sir. Why is this breaking? Okay, one second. Um, so, my I connected to LAN cable. Hello, sir. Yeah, maybe it is a application related issue. No, it is okay. Then it is good. OK, so understand the difference between incident and service request. So in issue. Repeat, repeat, is repeat, repeat the this point. Is, yeah, I will tell. I will, I will. Issue is there. It is an incident. It is a request like I want a internet connectivity. I want to uh, upgrade my internet connectivity. I want to configure a, a setting in my laptop. OK, I want uh, access um, a printer or I want a VPN access. These are all service requests means you are requesting for a service. Either it is for updated or upgradations or maybe access permissions or maybe some information or new service request it is. So that is a service request. If you got an issue like a customer got an issue, so that is uh, he is unable to access a service. OK, then it is an incident. It is an issue. OK, I want an Outlook configuration in my PC. So I send a request to service desk. Service desk person either remotely or maybe uh, they will send a person to configure an Outlook in a uh, customer uh, laptop. A customer means internal or external customer. It is working fine. Now good. Service request completed. Maybe after a few days, uh, after a few days, it's a client uh, or a customer is unable to send and receive a mail. They try to send a mail uh, or he uh, has to get a new mails, is unable to get it. Then it is in an incident. It is a incident. So this is the difference between incident and service test. Okay, uh, guys, these are the main important things. But already I told service test. Uh, one more is there. Surface. Uh, I given uh, uh, a demo link for uh, 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 one. One is uh, related to BMC. Felix ITSM. Okay. Uh, another one I wish I shared a video that is uh, fresh service. Now the name is changed to Freshworks. 
fresh work, current fresh work. Service desk. Okay, service desk surface. Not only this, guys, so many other uh, service desk like Zira is there, Zoho is there. You can try in YouTube also. There is a lot of uh, demo videos like how to create a ticket or what are the options in the particular software also. You can get it. No need to be master in it, just to know how it is look like. Okay, yeah, like you, you want to buy a new bike or a car or something you want to buy, you will die. see once how it is look like, right? So understand their features. Same, same thing only. Okay, how to create a ticket, how to check the tickets. Okay, what are the options are there? Yeah. One of the more demand uh, is service now is also mostly demanding uh, so not only this is so many other um, OS ticket GLPI these are all uh, different service desk software self help service desk software also there so uh, as I said levels level zero is like a self help type means you uh, no need to call to the service desk person. The customer will get a portal or maybe uh, IVR support. So just contact and give an raise the issue from it. Like a simple help desk tools. Simple help desk portals are there. Customer directly can give an raise an issue. Okay, so this software automatically uh, create a ticket and forward the ticket to the service desk analyst person. Yeah. What is ticket? This is also one important question. So what is the ticket? Types of tickets? As I said, uh, incident ticket is there. Service request ticket is there. Alert ticket. Okay. So these two tickets from maybe uh, service desk softwares are from, from the users. Okay. But alert tickets compulsory from the there is a monitoring tools. What is the monitoring? Monitoring the your infrastructure. How servers are going on? The server is functioning or not? Load on the server. Uh, monitor uh, load on the servers. Routers, switches, your applications, and their data center monitoring. Okay. So what is the monitoring? So different monitoring tools also uh, available like uh, uh, Zavix is a open source enterprise level. Uh, um, Zavik software it is, Nagivos it is also free trial version is there for Nagivos. PRTZ network monitoring tool, network performance monitor NPM, solar winds related it is. Really. Um, you don't need to be master in anything. So you can try in the US, a lot of videos are there. WhatsApp world. So a lot of uh, monitoring uh, tools are there. So try one or two on, uh, monitoring tools to know how it is looking. Maybe now or later. It's not required now. Okay. The more you know in the technical guys, that is more you will do better performance. Daily work is daily work only. Okay. So these are the main important points. I think I didn't uh, leave anything behind about a service desk. Compulsory, what is a service desk? What is service desk analysis do? Roles and responsibility of service desk. Okay, what are the huge requirement? Like I, I want to become a service desk analyst. What are the uh, my requirements? 
okay why should i what should i have knowledge in it have to able to communicate uh, with the people ability to listen to the clients ability to listen to the customers or clients uh, ability to give an answer okay having a technical knowledge okay having a technical knowledge and uh, giving a guidelines give proper guideline to the customer for example uh, i will give one network troubleshooting thing as also uh, internet not working okay so this one in this part only i am telling for example internet is not working so this is a issue is occur and uh, you got a complaint from the client or a customer internet not working how do you know how you can understand he said internet is not working but really is internet not working is, is not getting internet or not and where is an issue it can be in my laptop it can be in my mobile phone so i am accessing internet through my mobile phone it's not working it's not loading any page can in my laptop maybe it is issue can be in my router wifi router it may be it is issue with the connectivity it may be isp related issues so how we are getting internet from isp isp to our modem right so our modem in generally in home modems are our wifi routers on the right our wifi router is our modem so wifi modem to your laptop desktop and your mobile phones right wired or wirelessly connectivity can be wired or wireless connectivity so we can say there is a small switch or a hub can be there for the really not required sometimes in our home we don't use it but sometimes we may require this thing so from here yes so issue can be any place right so how to understand where is the issue so then we have to ask proper questions okay so uh, i am not getting internet it means how you know a client now he is not getting internet first one is internet symbol here okay so tell them so in your task bar in right side you can see a, a network symbol look like this one okay look like this one. either like or a like this or a globe symbol okay so you can see internet no oh, internet Okay. So you can see like this. It's a like globe symbol like this. It means you are not getting internet. You open a Google page, it is showing a no internet, and like this. Okay. This means Wi-Fi is disconnected. Wi-Fi is disconnected. This means connected but no internet. This is disconnected. This is connected but no. internet so which kind of symbol is getting okay which kind of symbol is getting is he getting a normal wifi symbol like this uh, here it is some it's a good picture it is but i need to show you see so it's a wifi is connected but it is showing no internet comma secure means is connected to wifi but it is showing no internet it means 
Brahman. This is my modem or a Wi-Fi modem, Wi-Fi router, something it is, right? And outside internet ISP connectivity. And this is my laptop or a desktop. I am getting no connectivity. Connection is there, means from here to here, connection is good. But internet is, we are not getting. So problem can be in this one. You have multiple devices. You have multiple devices. Okay. And all devices are not connecting. All devices are not connecting. That means no internet. Network is different. Internet is different. Network is there, but internet is not there. So it is a problem here in the router. Problem is here multiple devices. If only one device, this device is not connecting, but these are getting internet. So obviously we can understand only this device related problem is there. Okay, all devices are failure. It means all devices are not getting internet. Means it is a problem here or can be problem is here. ISP said. So uh, I will get back with that uh, things, uh, but simple to understand guys. So first of all, ask a in, client uh, or a, a user, what kind of symbol you are like able to see there and understand where is an issue. Okay, understand where is an issue from that one. Next, ask him to check your router. Every router has a a symbol uh, LED status. Every modem or a router having a LED status. Power LED, power LED. Okay. Uh, internet LED, Wi-Fi LED. If it is a there is a LAN connection, so LAN related LED. DSL LED. If it is a DLS, DSL or ADSL type of network, DSL or ADSL LED, it is there. OK, so check the LED status depends upon the type of connectivity ISP. So what is the LED status? Power LED is blinking. Wi-Fi LED is also blinking. LAN LED is blinking. And uh, your internet LED is showing red color. Remaining are green colors. means from ISP to your PC, there is some issue. Maybe this connection problem means your WAN cable connectivity, means WAN port, the water, the wire it is connected, maybe cable problem or ISP problem. So ask a person to disconnect and connect the cable back. Okay, and check the LED, it is showing yellow, Generally, yellow means it is disconnected. Yellow means the wire is disconnected. Yellow means WAN cable disconnected. Red means internet is disconnected. Blinking green means blinking green means or a stable green means internet is there. Internet is there. Internet disconnected. Cable disconnected. Okay, so it depends upon router to router. These things make different guys. Okay, so compulsory. Next configuration of router. Router van side configuration can be different. Van side configuration can be different. Means changed. Some you may change the password of your. Uh, internet related password you changed. Okay, not Wi-Fi password. I'm saying internet related password you changed. That time also it can be so one by one you have to ask questions. So I'm talking in service desk manner, not in a troubleshooting manner. Okay. But understand and uh, where is the exact issue. 
so you are failed to connect it to the wi-fi router or you are failed to connect to your modem modem is not getting internet or maybe isp have some problem so understand where is an issue so based on that you have to follow for example in my home i am not getting internet first i will verify these things am i able to get connected to my wi-fi router or not if it is a wide kind of stuff is a connectivity is there or not is it showing a, a internet no internet connection is there but no internet then it is a router related so i will check the back side connection if it is showing a yellow color so i will check the connectivity from my router to the wan connectivity and entire cable connectivity okay power off power on the router power off power on the router a reboot the router okay still no connectivity i will give complaint to the uh, isp because isp related problems i cannot troubleshoot right isp related i cannot troubleshoot so i will give a complaint to the uh, service provider so they have to see from their side and as well as at my uh, location side also so it's a physical locations also well, either issue can be in your modem or a router or a connectivity or in a isp related issues between isp to modem there is a, some um, routers are there in between so it can be that router's issue also so that issues can be resolved by isp provider so that's if you have an access you will check it but how to understand guys by asking one by one questions for example outlook these are two important questions that i am telling now again i will try okay in outlook unable to send this see Mails. I can't able to send and receive mails in Outlook. Maybe it is a internet related issue. First of all, check the internet connectivity. So you have to ask, are you getting internet? Uh, you know, open the browser and uh, search for some Google.com something like that. Are you getting some page or uh, search for some IP link? Okay, internet connectivity is there. internet is good if internet is good then problem is internet is good internet is there and where is the problem it can be outlook application configuration maybe your mailbox is full your mailbox is full in that case is also you can't able to send and receive or right? configuration related or mailbox is full or maybe mail server related issue mail server related issues internet no internet then no internet means first troubleshoot internet issues internet issues <laughs> later you can troubleshoot remaining thing without internet you can't access the mails right you can't send or receive mails okay. what is this mailbox is full okay you send a mail and receive a mail both the mails stores in the your mailbox and i already told that one okay in the server or in your local machine okay depends upon outlook okay so if it is a pop configuration mostly no problem okay imap uh, type of uh, configuration means server has a mail client has a mail so server uh, mail server mails are completely full so you cannot able to send and receive mail means your mailbox size is very smaller then obviously it will be filled right so what you have to do you have to delete some mails from your 
or you have to delete some old mails or unnecessary mails from your uh, machine. Okay, means you have to delete it, the mails. Even once you delete it, the mails go to trash can, right? So uh, delete mails, bin, trash bin, recycle bin, whatever the name it is, you have to delete from there also. So usually I delete a mails, the mail go to the trash or a uh, recycler bin. I have to delete from there also. And also clear up the sent mails, clear up the sent mails. Then also the mails become, if mailbox is full, Check the mailbox size, how much mailbox size remote, your server mailbox size it is. If mailbox size is full, then you also you cannot able to send a, or a receive a mails. So what I have to do, delete unnecessary mails. Even from Inbox, inbox, sent, spam type, spam boxes, okay, even recycle, bin or a trash can. Delete any unnecessary. The spelling can be different, okay? So that is may give you, or maybe mail server related issues. One more is there, that is the configuration password. is changed your mail password you got changed or some configuration so that's also may change this maybe you your change your main password but you didn't change in your outlook then also it may not work configuration pop3 imap incoming mail server outgoing mail server names ip addresses protocols port numbers these are all comes under configuration Maybe there is a change in this configuration. Maybe your mailbox is full or maybe server is having some issues. Or any changes in passwords, you are unable to send and receive emails. So first important is checking. The last one is application related issues. App crash. App having a problem. Application problem. What to do? If application related issue, what to do, guys? You have to troubleshoot applications. So go to the programs and features. Right click on the application. Go to repair. Select online repair and repair your application. Sign out, sign in from your PC or restart your PC. Maybe uh, issue may be resolved. Or try to repair your application or uninstall. Install the application. So these are the two main questions, common questions in an interview. One is if internet is not working, what you will do? Okay, how you understand internet is not working? The which where exact an issue you have to search from one to another point from here to here, not from ISP to your laptop, not from here to here you have to search. And outlook related, these are the best. Okay. okay, so this is a few one, two questions mainly. So next desktop or operating system related issues. That means PC or a laptop issues means hardware related or a operating system related. A hardware or a OS related issues. Already we discussed some hardware related issues. Right? 
system is slow. What to do? I'm telling now only. Okay. System is slow. What to do? Already eight times. Next one is BS body. BS body. What is a uh, BS body? System is crash. What to do? not working laptop not working desktop not working not working that's it okay what to do this is maintenance guys system is slow it is a maintenance what we do anyone system is slow slow function of system um, usage percent temp percent Tell me again. So we check the RAM usage. Okay, check the RAM usage. Very good. CPU utilization. Next. Configuration of the applications which we install. It's matching or not? Very good. Applications. Okay. So compulsory check the system is slow try to slowly go to task manager see the process cpu memory percentages if any unnecessary process is running and you know it it's a not a necessary process unnecessary process is running in this one okay and if it is utilizing more cpu or a more ram so if it is not necessary then better to end the task for example, this is there. You have to end the task. Okay. Next, performance. See the CPU utilization, how much it is there. And what is the memory utilization and available memory is compared with your main memory. Notice my available memory is good. You can see 5.8 is compared to a normal time. I don't know why it is that much available. <laughs> It's around 50% of utilization. It is 50%. Okay. For example, my RAM is 4 GB and I have a available memory 1 GB. That is also good. Depends upon your system, optimal kind of stuff. Not always required a 50% available. Okay. okay. Sometimes 60%, sometimes 70%. Like that. But as you said, good guys, that is. Check the RAM utilization. RAM utilization become very higher. There is a few things. Background running applications. Background running applications. Services. Startups. Current running applications, services, background services, and startups. Okay, these are the things also affect on our RAM. So your RAM size is good, but still you are getting more utilization. These are the points. Your RAM is smaller. For example, 4 GB RAM, 3 GB already utilized. So like a 60%, 70%, 80% of RAM is utilizing. You have to increase RAM. One thing it is. RAM size is small. Then 
increase the RAM if possible. Increase the RAM capacity. Okay. Delete unnecessary data transfer data to other drives or a external hard disk. Delete unnecessary data. Transfer data to another services. Okay. Next, uh, those applications if not using right now, right now you are not using that one. If you see, I open WhatsApp, I open uh, Edge browser, Chrome browser, Team, Notepad, and Paintbrush and Task Manager. If I open, for example, this mails or my Outlook or my uh, some uh, other uh, applications, so I have a lot of applications, right? So if I open all these things, so what will happen? It will take more. Uh, utilization of RAM, right? Parallel, I open a VS Code, I, I open a, a CC Cleaner, I open this uh, Miracle VM Virtual Box. So, what, what will happen? <coughs> okay, so it will utilize more CPU and more RAM. So, it depends upon your system capacity. You have to place close application if you are using that. So close tabs, browser tabs. If not required. Okay. More tabs are not good. So it's a case. It's a tab, but one pass okay. Uh, I got a link, so then I share link also. Okay, so something is given. So no internet secure if you are getting like this. What are the options? So my work is completed better. Close if any unnecessary tabs are running. So that is also improve your memory availability increases. So that is a another one. Guys, um, yeah. yeah, one or two more points I will tell and I will tell one important one. Services. Disable or keep the manual Okay, disable the service or uh, keep it in a manual mode uh, if not required now. Uninstall any unnecessary applications. Necessary. Why am I, I am unable to type unnecessary? Oh, very big mistake. I put a
necessary application uninstall the unnecessary applications okay so if you uninstall unnecessary applications the background services um, won't run background startups won't run okay. Okay. startups at task manager applications at a task so, so go to the startup and disable the applications which application really not required to run in a at a startup time okay this is the system is slow so if your ram is smaller better to increase your ram okay that is one thing if small ram so you are having a laptop and you to improve your laptop capacity we can't do anything guys we are using in an optimal position what is the capacity of laptop or a desktop we use that much only we can't improve it but even you use for a normal task as it is very slow so you have to understand what happened to our piece then compulsory do certain things okay so the background unnecessary applications startups applic uh, services okay stop those kind of stuff don't run more applications in it okay utilize in a optimal position guys yeah i said now i will tell one thing that is guys explain of answer one important is like this explanation like a type and explanation is quite easy draw and explanations using ppts or drawings is very easy to explain so i have done very easy think if you don't have anything in front of you to explain you have to use your words to explain something you have to uh, tell us answer without having any thing in front of you you have to explain uh, what is a vs word so i can show the how vs word is look like so when it is occur and i'll explain it good or maybe sir explain what is the hcp he showed some ppt or maybe he log into some other kind of stuff he showed uh, the is system he shared system screen all right it is very easy to explain think about an in interview at interview time you have to explain to the interviewer without anything you can't show anything just you have to use your words to explain understand guys last <laughs> nothing in front of you you can't show your screen to your interviewer right you cannot uh, explain by drawing or explain by sharing your screen or by explain by ppt you can't do that one you have to use your words to tell an answer to explain something to elaborate something understand yes sir yes sir you know how to tell i can show you and i will explain you understand but now you understand but how to explain to the interviewer without any ppt how to do it okay i told three things uh, at least three troubleshooting things okay one is internet not working another is outlook related now it is system is slow hmm? now three three questions you got in interview without anything in front of your uh, screen okay in, in front of you interviewer face is there nothing <laughs> okay so you sitting in front of your interviewer in the laptop so we have cam is on mic is on that's it so how to tell guys that need a practice okay so put a blank screen in front of you if you want to record yourself you can record that is also okay and practice put a question first 
my in mind or maybe some paper or maybe here so put have one question okay system is not working my system is not working question that's it okay even once you read a question and leave the question and start trying to tell an answer right try to tell an answer and when you are uh, telling there is a lot of mistakes will happen because the sentence formations first step next step next step the step by step answer you have to tell step by step you have to tell right so when you are telling that me there is a mistakes again try try again it become a smoother and become more easy to tell without suppressing any sentences or steps you can tell much better way if you practice it is become very easy i think you are all went to uh, internet uh, uh, some coaching centers right like uh, for uh, aptitude coaching centers or maybe uh, no intermediate time also we go, went to the colleges the lecture never miss the step is continuously will tell explain so how because is practicing from so many years i how i am telling because i am studied from so many days and i uh, studied i learn i uh, keep explaining same thing every day okay even that is also i have to think first before like a morning so i have to think what are the topics i have to tell today or what are the things i have to explain today at least to least i will think and become hobby so mostly i am not doing earlier days i practice uh, at least 15 to 20 minutes before telling some taking any topic okay now it is instantly also i can able to tell okay some few topics so guys so what is important is so put in a blank screen take any question either it can be a personal related questions which is i shared earlier okay or it can be a technical related question or it can be a troubleshooting related question or it can be a customer related questions any form of question please practice keep telling how to tell an answer if i am giving question and answer you read question you read answer you try to tell that answer only it become more uh, sticky time but you practice answer it is more open time so you, you openly will tell so interviewer has to think like you learn you practice you prepared for an interview you know in a, in normally in interview and why 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 is we will tell like uh, we didn't prepare much sorry for uh, we didn't prepare much even a dance shows uh, i got uh, some problem and i didn't practice dance and performing like this so in interview guys important is unpreparedness is not at all good you have to prepare like a practically like a, it's for example protocols and port numbers now it's a blank screen so protocols and port numbers the protocols are a set of rules so client and server understand what is the request or response through the uh, protocol for example http protocol so i open a web browser and i put http colon slash slash double three six dot some url so request go to that web server and understand what is your request is web related request and i am getting a web page okay there is https you are communicating with https is a secure if the data is encrypted while you are sending and receiving a data data is encrypted so no other person can able to steal your data okay that is http and other protocols are uh, ftp tftp uh, smtp pop3 imap and the, what is their pop numbers okay you practice you will get it so for example i will tell one troubleshooting um yeah, what is I have written system is not working right yeah, that one i will build them system is not working it is complaint you got it system or laptop or desktop is not working so not working means what 
what are the things you are seeing on your screen? It's a completely blank screen. Power connection is there. Power on is there. Is it a power on LED? It's blinking. OK, power on LED is blinking on that. How to imagine guys? While well, I'm telling, how to imagine. So if I, my laptop is there or a desktop is there, so I have to put an imagination before that. Tendency is not at all not mandatory now. Okay. Point is you have to imagine to tell us. Check the power connectivity. Power LED is blinking off. Once you power press the power button, power LED is blinking or not. Is it anything showing on the screen? On the screen, nothing. It is a blank screen. Power LED is blinking. Hard disk LED is not blinking. Keyboard LED not blinked. Not even a beep sound or maybe multiple beep sounds you are hearing. It is a post error. Power on self test related. So please open your system. Check for a RAM connectivity and other system components connectivity, power supply related connectivity to the CPU. Okay. So like that, so, so if it is a laptop, you can't do all the things. Okay, you have to compulsory check the only RAM maximum. Okay, so my exam, you can connect RAM capacity. Sorry, so RAM, maybe RAM slot has got disturbed. You got it. So check the RAM, clean up the RAM and try to connect it. Try once again, not working. Try with another RAM, cross verify with other components. Otherwise, take it to the direct uh, technician. Generally what we do. So because we cannot do anything on the motherboard. OK, so we cannot uh, directly orally we can't suggest. OK, so. If power LED is not blinking, means power supply related issue. Power LED is blinking, power supply is there, and post related issues. On your screen, you are getting unable to find bootable disk. Boot disk is not available. So, what you have to do? Check the post is successful, means your RAM processor, your motherboard is safe. Problem is maybe with the hard disk or operating system in the hard disk. So what to do? Go to the BIOS settings means power on your system, uh, completely power on your system, power off your system and try to go to BIOS settings again. So power on and go to BIOS settings or restart your PC. Put alt control delete. Put alt control delete so system will be restart and press the BIOS key. By your setting, check for a hard disk. Hard disk is available, operating system is corrupted. Hard disk is not available, maybe it is a loose connection or maybe hard disk is damaged. So you have to verify hard disk is really working or not working. Any connectivity issue, reconnect it back. Disconnect and connect it back. Okay, so hard disk is working, operating system is corrupted, then try to Restore your operating system from system image restoration or a system. Uh, go to troubleshooting options if possible. Go to troubleshooting options. Okay, or use uh, some portable disk. Uh, the Windows 10 usually take you to troubleshooting options. Startup repair. Try it. Startup repair or uh, try to um, restore it. Like that, guys. Boot MGR missing means bootloader is missing. So maybe bootloader is corrupted. So check hard disk is available or not. Go to troubleshooting uh, uh, repair options. So try to copy uh, from uh, your bootable disk to C drive uh, boot MGR. I told normally as a lecturer, uh, as a trainer, I told. But how to tell an answer uh, as an interviewer? So try to make it simple points. 
So step by step, how you verify power connectivity. If system is not working means not at all booting. Uh, no, no. So where is actually issue? what you have seen on the screen? After you power the press the power button, what you have seen based on that you have to start. When you press the power button, you got a unable to find portable drive means post error is not there. So no, no power supply related issues, no post related issues. So it is a hard disk related issues. System is you power on the system. You got a small windows logo and you are getting dot 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 uh, circle. Meaning is windows is trying to load, but it is not loading. It taking a lot of time like that only. So then you have to restart two, three times. It will take you to repair options, troubleshooting options, then start up repair. System is loaded. You try to log in and you log into your system. System is dead slow or you got a VSOD immediately. Our system is restarted. Means you have to troubleshoot according to that one. OK, so first understand an issue. So ask system is not working means what is an issue? So what kind of issue it is? Why? What is on the screen? Based on that, choose what troubleshooting you do it, guys. Explain that one in step by step. Again, okay. I explained it without any screen in front of it, but interview compulsory. That is again. Yeah. This one I will try to explain at least. What is a BS body? Blue screen of death. It is a kind of stop error or a system error. It is. We call that one as a stop error and it is a system error. Issues are any operating system related issues. Operating system at kernel level. In operating system at kernel level of operating system means operating system kernels and device drivers related issues occurs bs body occurs okay it's a full system failure okay so when you are working so suddenly a blue screen of death occurs what to do just wait note down what is the error stop code note down the stop code and wait let it go to 100 percent go to 100 percent once 100% completed, it will restart our PC. System is rebooted and you are not getting VSOD again, then it is okay, good. Okay. If you got a VSOD again, so you have to understand why you are getting VSOD from the stop code. Second one is what you have done last before you are getting a VSOD. Are you open any application? Do you install any application? Do you install any hardware? New hardware is there. Are you change any hardware configurations? Do you change any BIOS settings? Try to set back again. So try to restore previous settings or remove the hardware or maybe uninstall an application if possible. If you are recently updated, like a drivers updated, or maybe application updated, or you install a new application. You got a BSOD, go to the safe mode and try to restore your system from system restoration. Okay, like this, line by line, step by step, you have to tell guys. How to tell it is simply come from practice only. Okay. Not uh, from 100 times reading, one time or two time reading, but practice is important. If you practice, you can tell very simple way and the easy way. OK. So once it is become more easy, so enter your things, you know better. OK, it's not an examination, right? You can think and give an answer. It is spontaneously immediately. You have to give an answer. Okay, guys.